welcome to another mini tutorial by Third Academy. Today we're covering social media strategy. Here's the overview. Today we're going to cover what is a social strategy, what your target audience is, how to plan your content, and tips per platform. So what is a social media strategy? A social media strategy is a comprehensive plan that outlines how a business or an individual intends to use social media to achieve their goals. It involves identifying the target audience, defining the message or content to be shared, selecting the appropriate social media platforms, creating a content calendar, and monitoring and analyzing the results. A social media strategy should align with the overall business goals and brand values, and it should be adaptable to changing trends and new opportunities. The strategy should also take into account the unique features and strengths of each social media platform and how they can be used to reach and engage the target audience. The main goal of a social media strategy is to build a strong online presence, increase brand awareness, and drive engagement and conversions. It also helps to establish a consistent and recognizable brand voice and image across all social media platforms. What is your target audience? A target audience is a group of people who are most likely to be interested in or benefit from a product, service, or message. This group is usually defined based on specific characteristics such as age, gender, location, interests, behaviors, and other demographic and physiographic factors. Identifying a target audience is important because it helps businesses and individuals to tailor their marketing and communication efforts to the needs and preferences of the people they want to reach. By understanding the characteristics, preferences, and behaviors of their target audience, businesses can create more effective marketing messages, choose the most appropriate communication channels, and develop products and services that meet their customers' needs. Your target audience will differ from project to project. It will depend on the type of project that you're working with. For example, if you're working on an educational project, you'll be looking for people who are keen on self-education. They'll be self-motivated and they'll want to learn about a specific subject. If you're working on an athletic project of some kind, you'd be looking for people who care about health, like working out, and are motivated to join a community or purchase a product for a specific athletic-based reason. Again, you'll want to narrow your target audience down by age, location, interests, where they hang out online, what platforms they're most likely to use, and so on. You can get pretty creative with this. The reason that you'll want to develop a target audience is because it'll lead to an efficient use of your resources. If you start to market to anybody and everybody, especially if you're doing paid marketing, you're going to waste a lot of money because the majority of the people won't want your product or service. You're looking for that niche group of people. And even when you are creating content online, if you try to create it for everybody, you're going to miss a lot of people. Usually in the beginning, content needs to be specific and searchable. It'll help you to develop better communication because you'll know who you're talking to. You'll have a competitive advantage because you'll know the people that you're reaching, what they're wanting and needing. It'll increase your revenue because by meeting that target audience's needs, they'll be more likely to buy products or services from you. It'll build brand loyalty you'll reach the right people, you'll create a stronger community, and you can begin to tailor specific products to them. So have some fun and think about your project, business, or community. Who is likely to join? Why would they join your community or use your product? How will they hear about it? What value are they getting? And what else would this specific group of people need and enjoy? So now let's get into social media platforms. So we're going to cover six major platforms. The first is Twitter. Especially for Web3 projects, Twitter seems to still be the most active platform, although other platforms are growing, to, like LinkedIn or YouTube. On Twitter, it's mostly written content, so you'll be posting threads or single tweets, and you'll want to make sure that in the beginning, you do use some hashtags, but don't overload it because then it looks like spam. And the best thing to do is to stick to a certain niche or a topic, speak directly to your target audience, and start replying and following back to other creators or projects in your industry or within your niche. If you start to reply thoughtfully to larger accounts, it's more likely that people within that niche will see your reply 
and if it's interesting enough, they'll follow you. Twitter also has audio spaces, and you can also create Twitter groups, so this might be something to consider. On Instagram, it's a bit harder to grow initially, but people do still grow on Instagram, and it's a great place to reach a target audience that uses that platform. So you can create static posts, carousel posts that are swipeable, reels like short videos, you can post directly to your stories, Make sure to research your hashtags, which hashtags is your target audience most likely to use and follow. Those are the ones that you should start using, especially in the beginning. Instagram is kind of like a search or a blogging platform now. A lot of what you'll find on Instagram is through the search bar. And Instagram also uses keywords now, so if you're writing your description of Instagram in your Instagram posts, uh, make sure to use keywords that are relevant to your target audience. You can also have Instagram communities, and they also have guides now, which is a really interesting feature. Facebook is still used for business pages, and especially for local um, businesses, Facebook groups, Reels. You can create static posts. And you can also share in existing groups to, to reach a wider range of people. So LinkedIn is the next platform. If your target audience is more professional, you might want to grow on LinkedIn as it has a more professional user base. You can have a business page or you can use your personal page to grow. It does have a group feature. If you have a business page, you can also create a group. It has live video and audio sessions that are kind of like Twitter spaces. It has a newsletter function, which is great, and also sends that newsletter directly to your followers' email, not just on LinkedIn, which is pretty cool. And uh, you can also join other existing groups on LinkedIn. So TikTok has a wider demographic than most people would think. Uh, it is geared to a younger audience, but a lot of uh, you know older people are also using TikTok. So it's short video, and now they also added up to 10 minutes of video, so longer form videos as well. In the beginning, you want to use hashtags that are relevant to your target audience or to the niche or topic that you are uh, covering. That's to let TikTok know what your page is about so that they can send those videos to the people that are most likely to like them and watch them. It also is like a search engine because it's going to be competing with Google, so making sure that you optimize your profile and use keywords, and sometimes you have the chance to go viral. And finally, YouTube. YouTube is an amazing platform, and with all these considered, YouTube is really the place where most creators will create content because it has the best pay in terms of AdSense and other benefits from YouTube itself. So you can create YouTube shorts, like short form videos, you can create long form videos, in the beginning, you'll want to create search videos, which is uh, search engine optimized. So research what people in your target audience are going to be searching for most and use those keywords. And it's a chance to build up a content library. So most people start YouTube and they want to go viral right away, but really it's a chance to build up a library. And over time, that library will become more and more valuable to you and the people that you're serving. Now let's get into scheduling your content. So in the beginning, it'll be easiest if you can choose one or two platforms that you are comfortable with to grow. Once those platforms have grown and you feel good with the progress, then you can add more. But don't overwhelm yourself in the beginning. Start with the kind of content you know that you can create, whether that's video, using short form or long form, and if you're creating on a phone, you can use Video Leap. You can download that app and you can edit videos right from your phone. Audio, podcasting, and if you're on your phone, again, you can download an app called Anchor and create podcasts directly from your phone. You can create graphics on Canva or Adobe. Or, of course, you can create written content in the form of articles or short posts. If you keep your target audience in mind, creating content will be much easier you'll be able to come up with topics that meet their needs. For example, a social media manager might want to know about the latest Instagram change or how to write a great video hook. Always create for your audience with the most value that you can. You can even repurpose content. For example, if you make a Twitter post or thread, you can repurpose that on LinkedIn. If your post does well and it gets good engagement, you know that it has a topic that people are interested in. 
So then you can create a short video, an article, or a longer YouTube video covering that same topic. Or simply make a graphic to post on Instagram or Facebook. Or use that topic as a jumping off point for your newsletter. Keep track of what topics your audience seems interested in and always check the comments as they will be a gold mine for what your audience wants and needs from you. This is a kind of like a mock content calendar on Notion and Notion is free to use. So sign up for Notion. It's really great for organization, for everything like that. And they also have a calendar like this. And you can create your social media posts here. You can expand these and also write in what the content will be, what you're going to post, you can add your graphics, everything can be um, scheduled here in your content calendar and it just makes life so much easier. So for content scheduling, um, the schedule portion of that, on most platforms you can actually schedule your post in advance. If you don't want to be manually doing it every single day, you can schedule in advance on your platform. Uh, or you can use Facebook Business, which is like helps you to schedule posts on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and then they have other scheduling tools like Hootsuite, uh, or there's you know a range of other scheduling tools that you can use. You'll want to research your keywords and hashtags ahead of time. It'll just save you so much time. It'll be so much easier if you can actually have a list of hashtags that your target audience uses and follows, and just keep that with you as you're posting. You can plan and have fun with your weekdays or like days of the week can be themed differently. Like maybe Mondays are a certain theme, Tuesdays are a certain theme. In Web3, it could be like Web3 Wednesdays or NFT Fridays or something like that. You can have fun with that and just make it creative and unique to your own project. And as for time, keep in mind your target audience's time zone when they're most likely to engage, and you can track this in the analytics of each platform. So after you've been posting a bit, you wanna monitor and measure your results. Always reply back to your comments. It shows that you're engaged and that you're really there to build relationships. Leave a comment yourself. People do this when posting on Instagram, especially if you want to uh, notify your community of something in the comments or on YouTube. Usually you'll post a comment that says uh, like and subscribe or uh, something like, if you like this content, let us know what other topics you'd like to hear from us, something like that. Comment on other pages that are similar to yours. And a good way of using the platform is like right after you post something, Go on to similar accounts or accounts with like higher followings and comment on their posts. They're most likely to see your post afterwards as well then, and you'll likely get some comments and engagement from that. Do a weekly shout out to a community member or another page or profile that is in your niche or target audience. Experiment and have fun. Don't be afraid to try new things. Even if it doesn't work, you tried it and you can monitor your analytics for progress. And you will need to adjust as needed. So this is just something to keep in mind. Not everything will work, and that's perfectly okay. As part of social media is experimenting, seeing what your audience gravitates toward, what grabs their attention. You want to always be trying new things. You want to be innovating because the, in the end, that's really how you become successful. Um, growing a following and especially an engaged community does take time, so keep that in mind. It does take time. And remember, social media is supposed to be social, so get in there, make relationships, comment back, and you'll do well. And ask for help when needed. You can ask for help from us at Third Academy, especially if you join our Discord group or follow us on social media, or you can ask for help from your team members if you're working with a team. So thank you so much for joining us for another mini tutorial. Don't forget to follow us across social media and subscribe. You can join our Discord if you want to stay connected, and I'll see you again for another mini tutorial coming up soon.